It's a productivity engine, which is the next generation after a search and an answer engine. So we really make people more productive across a whole host of different kinds of organizations, from hedge funds to universities to companies, insurance companies, and so on, publishers, news agencies, and uh, almost everyone else in between who has sales, service, marketing, research, analysis, uh, and so on. 2010, I had this crazy idea to train a single neural network for all of NLP. And 2018, we finally really built the first model uh, that invented prompt engineering, where you can just ask one model all the different questions you have. And over time, of course, you can ask questions not just over text, but also over images. I came at natural language processing. I came at AI from a philosophical perspective originally. I was doing philosophy of language and computer science on the side for fun. I was interested in meaning and in academic, in the academic world and analytic philosophy, a lot of those questions of meaning become questions of language. I mean, so I, I really wanted to teach a model language so that we could use language to describe what we wanted it to do. And it could use language to do all the things that we do with language rather than have the model be stuck on some artificial task. And someone from marketing can say, well, I usually get this long product description and then I have to describe it for these different industries in the email campaign and I have to write three tweets and three LinkedIn messages, all this stuff. And we're like, well, just say that to this agent and then the AI agent does it for them. They're like, wow, now it's like six to 20 hours of work every other week just got automated by describing this workflow that I used to do manually to an AI agent. And I think that will change pretty much all work and you, pretty Richard. much every industry. If you need to build an internal tool for your company that looks a lot like you.com, but it can't run you know, on the public web or something like that, well, then you can use all of our APIs, which back smart motive a smart API, research motive a research API. And we can make those work over your data. And if you just don't want to think about the rest, we'll help you do that. And then you can have your application. So a lot of people at this point, in fact, my favorite customers are the ones that have spent maybe a year or so with five, six, maybe a dozen people trying to build a rag-like solution using OpenAI and following a blog post to set up a vector data pace and, and, and do this. And they just don't really see the ROI or they don't get it adopted within their company. Like A lot of large companies are not seeing adoption um, even once they've built their internal rag tool. And we can come in and bring all of these extra models, this extra, oftentimes I'll call it like a trust layer on top, like actually make this stuff work, right? And make it trustworthy for your employees. I think the biggest thing is probably agents and how they will change work. I think over the next few years and maybe decades, almost every company will hit some kind of innovator's dilemma uh, in that the way they used to make revenue is going to change because a lot of their processes are going to get automated with AI. Is eventually, an AI agent can surf the web for you. I think actually in the next few years, we're probably going to see more and more AI agents surfing the web for you than we have people surfing the web, which will change the web as we know it too and how it often monetizes. So when you put all this together, I think you'll realize that we're currently entering a new age of AI, you know, in the terms of different stages of humanity. This is a true step function in human productivity, and it's sometimes scary, right? Because imagine 150 years ago, over 90% of people worked in agriculture. If you now ask someone, 90% of you, would you want to work in the field every day with your hands, no one would say, yeah, let's go back to that time. But at the time, if you said, hey, there's going to be these big machines, and if you stand in their way, they'll just crush you, and by the way, they'll take 90% of all the jobs that you know, people would be like, oh, this is a scary time. Maybe we don't want these machines, right? And so I'm long-term extremely optimistic, but short-term, it will put pressure on social systems and on all of us to not just think we could coast on what we've once learned in college and then not have to learn anymore. Things will change more and more rapidly, and we have to keep learning together. And so this age of AI, I think, is kind of a mix. History doesn't repeat itself, itself, but it rhymes. And here, I think it rhymes with a mix of the Renaissance, the Enlightenment, being able to 
make new scientific breakthroughs, uh, and the industrial revolution of getting massively more efficient in a lot of our processes.